is Brad Reed, your real life trader, here reminding you to be good. And by good, I mean get out of debt and achieve your financial dreams. Hope everyone is doing well on this Friday afternoon. I think it's pretty cold in a lot of places. Uh, I got my dad, which is in absolutely frigid Austin, Texas. I think he was complaining that it was 50 degrees today. Uh, Angie's out in California. Angie, what's the um, what's the weather like where you are? Is it cold oh, or warm? It's just horrible. But I did beat your dad. It's uh, 52 here. Looking forward to a great sunny weekend. It's, uh, I think, 24, 25 here. Um, yeah. but it's which is warm for us but it's supposed to get up into the 40s and 50s next week so everyone's kind of excited nice. we looked at a bunch of stocks this morning uh, for day trades excuse me this afternoon for day trades but really didn't see anything that we thought looked pretty well we were talking about taking EQR bearish somewhere around in here which looks like it's playing out but didn't really have a strong edge and certainly not anything risking an R this one HCN looks like it might play out but um guys if you're looking at hcn the 10 emas coming this is a 15 minute chart this is what it looks like on a five minute that doesn't give me a headache at all let me move this around now you got the 10 and the 20. actually you could lower this if you like a five minute entry uh, the high there is 43 73 43 so you can move this to 73 45. And that is a better reward risk ratio. Where is anyway? So if you if you think HCN is going bearish, there is that. Boom! All right, we were talking about P10, and um, Julie crushed this one for 5R yesterday. Um, saw this double yeah. bottom, and I think that crossed the 10 EMA on uh, the daily, and then she oh, got really? in right up there. Yes, sir. Let me interrupt a moment. Uh, I'm. I think the screen shot may not be on. It oh, may not be a screen. Thank you. I should probably share my screen. Thanks, Dad. Appreciate that. Julie, are you paying me compliments? Julie said, "Jeremy Newsom, your your screen is gone." This is Brad. But I appreciate the compliment. Um, uh, I had to hack into uh, Jeremy's Click Webinar account to become presenter. So it's Brad. At any rate, okay, let's go back. Um, there was two trades. What was I talking about? I was talking about HCE. Well, here's uh, Patterson Energy. This is the one that uh, Julie crushed for 5R. Uh, on a daily chart, the 10 EMA crosses right there. On uh, the five minute chart, this is a massive type double bottom ish pattern. And uh, she got in at the top of this pattern, which is also where the 10 EMA crosses on the daily, sold half there, and just tried to escape at the end of the day. And um, yeah, 5R. That's awesome. And this is HCEN, and we were talking about a entry way down here at the bottom. Um, something like that. I don't think anyone's taking that, so I'm just going to keep moving on, moving on. Uh, day trading was just a little bit boring today. Pretty active th uh, this morning, but uh, not too crazy this afternoon. All right, I'm going to switch over here to the Dow. And the Dow Jones is just kind of doing what it does. And Angie, who was saying that uh, Apple got added to the Dow Jones? That was Tina. That was Tina Rowley, yeah. Tina Rowley says that Apple is going to be added to the, um, the Dow Jones and that Visa is being taken off. Dow had a big black candle today. So um, it is confirming this thing up here as a double top. It came down, hit the 50, which is a target. It also hit this line as a target so if you had shares you may have uh, bought a protective put and that protective put should be paying you pretty decent money um, I don't know how much time you had on your protective put but remember today's Friday and um, 
you will get two days of theta against you over the weekend. But if you if you've got several weeks on it, then uh, it could continue to be good. Um, let's see. This is a strong, uh, pretty decent pivot point. So was this one up here that we went through. Come on, draw the line, please. And so we're we are sitting on the 50 exponential moving average. And we are sitting on a, a pivot point, which was the lowest high that we've recently experienced. So uh, it looks pretty strong. Um, I, I would imagine we either bounce or we will uh, at least go sideways. I bet the indicators are pegged pretty low. Well, they're not. The indicators could go lower. But I don't see anything surprising from that let's turn on the simples are we on the 100 so um i think if we do close below this pivot point that we will come down to the 100 and do something at the 100 uh before going back up i'm noticing last time we came down to the 200 so there is a chance that we could make it down to the 200 again but i do believe for a day or two Monday, maybe Tuesday, we'll have a little bit of that before we uh, before we continue one way or another. One way or another. It'll wait there before it keeps going. Blondie was awesome. Okay, so that's the Dow. SPY also had a fairly bearish day. Didn't quite come down to as strong of a pivot point as the Dow did. Uh, so this could come some more. Uh, so if the Dow goes sideways or comes down, I think SPY will certainly come down a little bit more. How gorgeous would it be if the Dow, uh, excuse me, SPY could come down, give us a little bit of this, let the 100 catch up, and then we buy the bounce. That would be pretty sweetness. If we go back over to the exponentials, we have yet to get to the 50. So that will probably happen on Monday. But again, I, more bullish than bearish. Um, you know, short-term bearish, yes. And uh, this topping pattern, I guess that could be some kind of interesting head and shoulders with a double top as the head. Uh, whatever you want to call that, the mashed potato dance, that's a topping pattern. Um, and today, obviously, confirmed that um, we're not going to go up for a while. Uh, and for a while, I mean a couple of days. But this is one of the craziest markets we've seen. So who knows? It could be doing anything. But if uh, you did have shares of SPY buying a protective put there or now, uh, would not be a bad plan because I do think, at least for a little bit, we will be slightly more bearish than bullish. I believe we'll come down to that 50, to this pivot, or to the 100 simple moving average before moving on. Those are my thoughts on SPY. People are typing in their favorite uh, Blondie songs in the chat pane. Um, let's see, DIA, SPY, how about UQQ? Uh, looks kind of the same thing. We still have this topping pattern, this thing coming down. I doubt that's going to touch the EMA. Yeah, so that's only the 20, really far away from the 50 EMA. So the NASDAQ may go sideways a little bit. Yeah, a bunch of gaps here. These are retest gaps up and through here. So uh, especially we are a little bit more bearish than bullish on the DIA and SPY. So I'm going to call for the QQQ to come down here and uh, fulfill the retest of, of this breakout. The 50 moving average will come in and uh, give it some support right in there. The simples are pretty far. So... Um, I am more bearish than bullish on uh, QQQs. Uh, the question right now is if the Dow and the and the SPY go bearish, will this thing slow down and retest that and catch and and, 
and bounce or will it come all the way down to the or will it speed up and come down to the 100 and i think monday's candle will tell the story but that's my thought on qqq the russell 2000 this one doesn't look nearly as bearish as the others i guess i could draw that line there i can also draw this line in here um but this kind of looks the same i'm thinking based on the way those others looked that we may have a little bit of a topping pattern of russell 2000 um if there are, I, I know there's a bunch of people out there in their media that are always screaming that you know this is the top this is the end um i don't think this is the end this is a healthy pullback this is giving uh traders a chance to buy the bounce so if you have not yet bought the bounce it's coming up. I think we'll have it sometime middle of next week, maybe. Maybe maybe two weeks. But anyway, three to four days, uh, I think we'll, we should start looking for a bounce opportunity on any one of those lines, maybe the 50, maybe the 100. Why do I think the 100 is going to be closer? And the 100 is pretty far. But um, I, I think we'll have at least a few ripples, maybe something like that off the 50. And then either come down to the 100 and bounce or bounce here uh, off of the 50 moving average before continuing upwards. I believe if we do have something that becomes the top of the top of the top, and this is it. And guys, I'm not saying it is. I'm just saying if this is, what might it possibly look like? And I would imagine we'd come down here to the 100 or 200. Yikes, I didn't want to do that. Let me turn on the simples. Um, we would have a move that looks something like this. And it would end up forming a pretty massive head and shoulders pattern. Then we would break down from that, come up and retest it. And then that would be when, you know, everyone should start running. Well, no one should run with their hair on fire. Uh, you have until then to have learned how to make a gazillion dollars in a bearish market. Because if the market does break bearish on a big scale, like uh, many people in the media are trying to claim that they know it's going to, it'll move fast. So go check out the videos at reallifetrading.com and learn how to, how to do that. Because when it moves, it will move quickly and there will be a chance to make a lot of money if you know how to do it. So those are my thoughts on the indexes. And uh, yeah, there was a stock we were looking at. Yeah, Bitta, uh, we had a couple of different ideas on this one. Let me remove all of these drawing tools and start over and I can kind of tell the story. So here's the simple uh, moving averages. Obviously the blue is the 100, the red is the 200 moving average. We have a nice little pivot area right in here. We have been uh, making some bearish moves on, on this. Notice these relative highs up here. Do, 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 do. It failed to set any new uh, highs, and so it's now setting a lower low. That is a little bit bearish. However, um, this is some kind of bottoming pattern. Uh, and this thing right here looks kind of like a double bottom, and that thing down there kind of looks like a double bottom. So whatever you want to call it, the mashed potato dance, uh, that is a, a bullish signal, and there is a bullish break. This guy right in here, white candle, bullish candle that gaps up, that is a retest gap, and lo and behold, it retested. So what we were talking about in the first part of the video was this Dealy bopper looks bullish. This dealy bopper looks bullish. This is a retest gap they just retested. There's a chance, a good chance, that this thing continues on up. And so we were talking about a potential sniper trade. And the entry would be just above the 100 moving average if you were interested in such a thing. So the one, excuse me, above the 200 moving average. The 200 is now at 67.36. So you could put your entry, um, 
I also want the entry to be above the bottom of this candle uh, that gapped up. So the bottom of this candle is 13. That's 635. So let's call it 6737. And so that would be actually that 6739. That's not bad. Uh, the top would be I would I would want to be setting your first target by the time you got to the 100 simple, and your stop could go just below today's candle, and that is a, a two to one. If you came down here, um, you could take this all the way to the top, and that's a, a two to one. Um, and if you moved your stop up to something like that, that's a three to one. Uh, there's a couple of different ways you could play this, but this would be a very quick trade. Uh, it would have a good reward risk ratio. There is a chance that you get that, that you would get stopped out, but that's kind of what we were looking at. And then we had the information that Beta is uh, expecting earnings to come up uh, before the market opens on Monday. So that being said, If beta gaps above this, sorry, uh, nothing wrong with the recording, something's wrong with my mouth, it's just not working. Um, if we get a gap above 70, 80 uh, for Monday morning, I would be more bullish than bearish. That uh, might be a good uh, gap and go. Might even be a perfect gap and go. You'd have to check that out. But something above that line, would uh, uh, I would trade that bullish. If Then the question is, where would it have to gap to to go bearish? Um, not feeling a bunch of bearish trades. If It would certainly have to gap below that for me to consider it. If it gapped below the bottom of this area, that would be well over a 10% gap. So that would cause me to hesitate. I think I might want it to gap um, kind of at the top of this area. I, I, I'm not sure if I, if I feel real confident about a bearish trade on bid, uh, uh, bid auto holdings. But that would be my plan. And let me save this. And then after the session, I'll fill in the numbers and fill in the numbers. And I will publish that. So if you are following real life trading on trading view and you have set your options appropriately you can get an email about the things that we are looking at all right it is financial friday and we got news from tina that visa is getting removed from the dow jones which could give it a a boost one way or another uh, probably a bearish boost but um Let's see, I'm trying to see how strong I think this trend line here is. Um, I'm going to take it off for now. So uh, the market seems to be a bit bearish. Visa getting removed from the Dell might be bearish. So this might be a little bit of a bearish move. I'm trying to see. Um, I do think I would want a close below here before taking it uh, any further bearish. And you've got the 100 simple coming up very quick. Uh, yeah, the 100 simple coming up very quickly. So uh, if you do want to take it bearish, that's where it is. I think this might be a great chance to buy the bounce because I think like the rest of the market, I think it, it will bounce. Uh, time will tell to see what happens with Visa and this news report. Um, but if the market bounces at the about the same time, Visa comes down and hits the support line, and that if if that is also about the same time, the 100 simple moving average comes up, that might be a great trade. If it were two or three days ago, I'd be looking at a weekly bear call spread up here. But I, we're a little bit too late for now because that spread would expire in about 62 minutes. Questions, thoughts, opposing views on Visa? Type them in. If you guys have any tickers you want me to take a look at, I'd be happy to. Let's go on to Ma MasterCard. We were looking at this one yesterday. Um, we did get a, uh, it did hit our, uh, if you have shares, consider a protective put. Um, 
as it is likely to continue down to at least this support level, maybe down. There's going to be a support zone somewhere in between these two lines um, where it is likely to bounce. The 100 is coming in. If this thing continues and we get a close below here, then this would be a very nicely shaped double top, which can mean a bearish move down to here. I think the 100 is going to cross it before it gets to this pivot area. But the 100 might be coming in right when it gets to this gap, uh, this gap here. By the way, we have a bullish candle that gaps up. That is a retest gap, and it has not yet retested. So if we do come down here, uh, it would make sense to retest this, uh, and then we may get a chance for it to bounce from there. So if you are in, if you do have shares for MasterCard, uh, you can consider buying a protective put and protecting yourself um, and maybe even making a little bit money on a bearish move. If you do not have shares, uh, I think this trigger is still good. There is a chance that it, uh, that it pops bearish on Monday or over the weekend because we do have it's not very significant, but it is there, these bottoms. So if we get a if move below that trend line on Monday, which is kind of what I'm thinking. I'm feeling a little bit more for that than, than the bullish. But, um, you know, anything could happen. I'm trying to see. I do see, eh. A little bit of divergence in the RSI. Has the MACD shown any divergence or are they just coming together? They're just coming together. So I'm trying to find something that gives me a really strong indicator one way or another, and I'm just not getting it. Um, I see the 20 simple moving average on the Bollinger Band coming up to this support line. So I do think uh, this has a slightly more bearish edge than bullish. I am slightly more bearish than bullish on MasterCard, at least for another day or two. And then we'll see what happens when it comes into this pivot point right down here. Questions, thoughts, opposing viewpoints on MasterCard. All righty. Let's check out Citigroup. Citigroup looks like it's going to pause for a little bit. And let me adjust my picture just a little bit. Um, so Citigroup is just kind of going sideways in this big consolidation pattern. We can draw some lines. Certainly something going on about there. Oops. Let me draw this line, horizontal line. So a resistance that held here through here is going to hold in through here, I see. Um, this could be a pause just before it breaks above this. But um, when something is in a sideways pattern like this, it is always great to take a look at the stochastics. So if we come down here, the stochastics have not yet rolled over. Um, RSI is not showing us anything. I guess we do have a little tiny bit of, yeah, I guess uh, that's really hard to call that divergence. Um, if it's going to make a bearish move, this is the type of divergence I'd want to see on stochastics. See how this stock went from there to there and that time, but the stochastics went a little bit down. So I don't think this thing is ready to make its big move down yet. If the stochastics roll down like that on Monday or Tuesday, then you might look at a bear call spread up here, or you might look at a, a very short, quick trip down. But um, yeah, you do have the center line of this pattern is right in through there, and it could bounce off the center line like it did there, or it could continue on down like it has there and there. So overall, this thing looks just kind of sideways. Um, I'd watch the stochastics for your clues on how to trade Citigroup. 
but it might be fun if you are a little bit longer term trader. Uh, if it does break down and you could execute that, that uh, bear call spread up there, you see the bounce, you might leg into a bull put spread and make that an iron condor. I think that's kind of the way Jeremy pronounces those. At any rate, um, interesting play on Citigroup if you like to trade non-directionally. Um, otherwise, it's just kind of boring. Moving on. Capital One. <clears throat> Looks like it's pausing in through here. We had a, this one's got some interesting patterns shaping up. Certainly a pivot point somewhere around in there. And one here. Let's get some more data on the picture. And this one's going sideways too. So right now is not really, if, if you like uh, channel trading, and by channel trading, um, I mean you would sell here. And buy there, sell here, and buy there. Uh, some people uh, do that strategy where you divide the channel into a couple of lanes. And when it's leaving the top lane, you sell it and you buy it before it gets to the bottom. You close it out, I should say, before it gets to the bottom lane. And then if it gets, and then if it leaves the bottom lane, you buy it and you sell it before it gets into the top lane. So um, sometimes people have three lanes, but this would be my bottom lane, and this would be my top lane. At any rate, um, where we are now on Capital One Financial is it looks like we are going towards the top of the lane. This looks head and shoulder-ish to me, or maybe that's double bottom-ish, something like that. And then we just have some little sideways wiggle in here in the middle, and we could continue up. Now, when anything's in a sideways pattern, the stochastics tend to be a very good indicator of what's going on. Um, the stochastics have yet to roll up, which is interesting. RSI is certainly resting, telling us that we do have potential to keep going up, and stochastics are at a very interesting Sorry, the, the RSI is at a very interesting level to, to pop. But if the stochastics do roll up, then it could mean we are headed up into the top lane. If you have purchased down here, you could always do a sell limit right up there, and then when you hit it, you sell it. If you were thinking of a bull put spread, I think the time to do it would have been either on this candle let me get you a bigger picture to talk about that. Oh, man. Yeah. That is the definition of sideways. Let's see. I need a little bit bigger picture. If you like iron condors, I would not do a bull put spread in here with a break north just because um, – this is uh, this is fair game for this stock, basically. You could have done a bull put spread down here when this candle broke above there, or you could have done one down here when this candle broke above that because I, I think it'll be a while before it comes back down into this neck of the woods. Um, if this... Let's see. Yeah, so that would be my plan. If you like uh, those type strategies, I would say to wait for it to come back up. And then when it rolls down uh, and closes out of this top lane, then you can do your bear call spread up here. Bear call spread. And then leg into an iron condor after it comes down here and bounces back up. Interesting that we've uh, seen fairly bearish patterns on the overall market, but nothing too much here on these financial stocks could mean that these things are going to uh, come back down into the buying lane and give you an opportunity to buy the bounce, or it could mean that we're just going to go sideways. At any rate, I'd watch the stochastics on uh, these financial stocks for your clue of what to do. Let's go on, look at another one. 
Peg says bullish divergence on MACD. Was that on Capital One Peg? I'm going to take some of my drawings off of here. All right. MACD. You say bullish or bearish? Bullish divergence on MACD. Um, I don't see anything shaping up as bullish divergence on MACD just yet. Um, and I'm trying to find some on the picture to demonstrate what MACD um, bearish divergence would look like. Um, sorry, what bullish divergence would look like. Um, bullish divergence, let me do this. If we had bullish divergence here, I would be expecting to have lower lows on the stock, but higher lows on the MACD. And that would basically mean that the bearish momentum is running out on the stock uh, and that it's either it's likely soon to either pop bullish or at least stop the bearish movement and go sideways. But I, I'm I'm not seeing that just yet. Maybe we were talking about maybe you were talking about the previous one. Okay. All righty. Let's keep on going to to Deutsche Bank, and this is a gappy little thing. Let me uh, adjust my picture just. All right, let's see. Um, this thing is really gappy. Really, really gappy. There's a pivot point there. Uh, this thing, kind of like the others, has been going sideways. Just sideways, sideways. I guess it's been going a little bit down. Um, if we get a rollback up, I think that would be slightly bullish. Uh, I just don't like trading stocks that have so many uh so many gaps in them like that um do, do, do. this is some sort of topping pattern with a neckline there there's the retest uh this is a gap and go so it could come back down here to the 50. this is a retest gap here that has retested um I, i'm pretty non-directional on deutsche bank i think it could go either way or it could go sideways let's take a look at the indicators and see what they are saying and they're not saying much here is a little bit of bullish divergence where your stokes are going up but the bottoms are going down so there is an example of bullish divergence, um, but I'm not seeing any bearish divergence. So I'm not, um, the indicators look like I expect them to do. So uh, no new information there. Um, if you were thinking about getting in on Deutsche Bank, I think it's just kind of going sideways. If you are already in on Deutsche Bank, you could sell a, a short-term covered call. Hopefully you did that last week, but uh, up around 34 or 35, I don't think would be a horrible idea. If it does close this gap and gets around in the 50, I think if it does close this gap and you get a bearish move down below that, you could buy a protective put. Um, but it it would not be unlogical for this thing to roll back down to there, just like it did there and there. Uh, and this thing just kind of going sideways. It's got the motion of the ocean, just kind of going up and down and up and down and just kind of doing its thing and doing what it do when it do it. Questions, thoughts, opposing views on Deutsche Bank. Coming up over here to FAS. And this thing looks uh, just the same now. Now I'm a little bit more bullish on FAS than I am some of those others. Um, 
this seems to be a, an extremely key pivot point right in through here because when we broke above it, we kept going above it, um, and it doesn't stay around this pivot point very long. So what I'm seeing here is a little bit of a double bottom and then a motion up here to retest the breakout of that double bottom. Um, so if, if it does make a move down below the 50 and below this pivot point, I think we could be uh, going down again. If the market does do that, you can watch for FAS to make a bearish move. Um, and it, you know, based on this and this, it could be a fairly significant bearish move if we do get a close below that. I guess I can draw that on the chart. Let's see, horizontal array, if we get, um, let's see, I'm going to place it just below this candle here. I'm going to place it just below that. So if we get a move all the way down to there, then uh, you could take a bearish move. Uh, your stop would have to be up here. I think if it does do this, it'll retest that. So it'll give you a little wiggle, and you can put your stop in above that wiggle, above that retest before taking it on. And your target, uh, your first target, of course, is going to be 2R. Um, It'd be nice if you could get 2R by there, but uh, based on, uh, let's see, uh, based on that, you may get a target somewhere around there. Uh, let's turn on the, the simple moving averages and see if that gives us a better idea of, of where your target might be. Um, oh, I love this trigger because that would be a close below the 100, and this target would be about where the 200 catches up. So that is a sweet trade. So here's the way I, I draw it. If you do get a close below there, you can look for a, a bearish move down to the target somewhere around here, which is this pivot point, and also where the 200 simple moving average is going to catch up. Uh, make sure that you have a reasonable stop that would give you a two to one reward risk ratio. I say reasonable, meaning you've got some sort of candle wick or an EMA or a logical reason to put your stop somewhere around in here. Um, it ha I don't see anything that would, that would tell me to put my stop there yet. So we need three or four or five, maybe 10 more candles before that happens. But um, that's part of the trade. I just need more candles for I can draw the rest of the trade. I'm wondering if we get, well, any bullish, any divergence that we see might just indicate sideways. And we're not getting, eh, we are getting divergence. I'm not sure if I'd call that divergence or if I'd call that just resting. Uh, if, if FAS were continuing upwards like that, then I would call that divergence, but this sideways move just means that RSI is resting and resetting. Um, so with that information, we can come back over here and we can draw another something like that. If it pops above that, we could get another uh, bullish trade and that would be the target unfortunately i don't yet know where the stop would be um i think if it breaks out of if it um if we if it starts going bullish it'll come up and hit that and roll back down and give us a place for the stop before continuing on to the target so that is my plan on fas questions thoughts opposing views Alrighty, let's go take a look at some other stocks. Apple's been popular. Um, we got a uh, black candle again today, a bearish candle, a little bit of sideways movement. Um, bigger volume than yesterday, though. So the fact that we got more volume and the fact that it went sideways means that we did have some buyers come in, even though we did have a few more sellers than we did buyers. I'm going to take this line off for now 
So we have a little bit more bullish outlook on Apple than we have before, but uh, there is a pivot point here, which is why we put our protection put just below it. Um, there's a pivot point at this gap. I guess we can draw that line. Let's see, the bottom of this candle is 125.57. So let's put this in that area. Uh, and our protective put, I guess what we have it is 125.51. We can drag that down a little bit. Um, but this is a retest gap. This is the retest of that retest gap. So it, it really could go either way. It could roll back up or it could roll back down. Um, this is also a retest gap. So it would not be crazy shocking if we come back down here and we retest this gap and about that time the 50 exponential moving average would come in. But honestly, I know I've been more, um, okay, here's what I think. I think if the if the market continues bearish, which we, we said it's kind of showing that it might, then Apple will also go through here, trigger the protective put, and come down here and we'll have to make a decision what to do at this level around 122. If the market goes sideways and or goes bullish, I think Apple will roll back up and uh, this gap will hold and we'll go back to the high of the day. Um, stochastics aren't gonna tell me much just because we are resting and in a trend. Yeah, no new information there. All right, so I think that's my plan on Apple. Yeah, hundreds are far. Uh, the 100 simple moving average is far. So if, if we do get a close below this line, I think we're going to come back and retest this gap uh, so you can buy your protective put here and look to maybe exit it there. Or if we close, then um, that protective put could turn into actually quite a lucrative. Um, uh, that put could make you a whole lot of money. Um, if we form a bullish candle tomorrow, yeah, especially if we get above this indecision point here, well, and that gap actually, now that I see that, let's see, yeah, I'll draw a horizontal line. If we get a bullish move above that line, and I'm going to make that uh, uh, lighter blue, if we get a bullish move above that, I think we will go back up and challenge the, the high of the stock and possibly even setting a higher high. Questions, thoughts, opposing views on Apple? All righty. Uh, we've been looking at Netflix this week. It's been doing some interesting stuff. And Netflix gave us another bearish candle. Very, very interesting. And it's actually right on our stop right now. So is it below this pivot point? I think it's still slightly above our stop, but remember we said uh, if it gets below this pivot point here, then uh, we go ahead and dump shares and possibly even take a bearish position on Netflix. If you like uh, credit spreads, a bear call spread up here on Netflix might be uh, a decent play. I see earnings coming up on Trading view shows it April 20th, and I believe April expiration. Let's see. If you're going to do a bear call spread, you might be looking at March expiration. But uh, it, it, this is a, I think I was calling it double top, but that also could be a head and shoulders. Double top, head and shoulders, it's all bearish. Um, I think this thing might come up and retest the neckline of this head and shoulders. Uh uh, double tops and head and shoulders are typically retested. So if you do want to go bearish on Netflix and you haven't gotten in yet, you can look for a break below this pivot area or wait for a retest. And I bet we get a retest. So if you brought, if you bought your protective put yesterday, it ought to be making you quite a bit of money today. Watch it carefully. Um, because as we come to this pivot point, we could go sideways, roll back up. 
I'm going to draw a pivot point there based on all this action. And that makes total sense where this neckline is. Um, and man, based on that picture, I do think we have a great chance of retesting this. So I, I predict a very minimally bullish short-term move on Netflix. And um, it's likely we could continue bearish after that. Let me get this out of the way. Yeah, so I, I'm thinking we're going to see something like this, like we did over here. So nothing too scary or dramatic at first, but uh, you know, this is the retest of this uh, triple top looking thing. Generally, those retests happen sooner, but um, yeah, it could happen. That's what I expect. And then maybe it comes down here and challenges the simple moving average. Something kind of like this, like this, could definitely happen again. And it could gap down and do one of these. But um, it's not going to do that uh, very soon, I don't think. So, yes, my, my perspective on Netflix is more bearish than bullish. I do think we'll get a retest before continuing on. Uh, if you like bear call spreads, take a look at one up above uh, 490, 500 would be even better. So that is my thoughts on Netflix. Questions, thoughts, opposing views, anything, any tickers you guys want me to take a look at? Otherwise, you know what? Uh, ooh, Amazon was also doing some interesting things. So if you were in shares of Amazon, uh, it did trigger our short-term stop. Um, I think we have been talking about uh, some divergence showing up on the charts. Um, this candle does not have the volume that I had hoped for on an exit. So there still is 20 minutes Um left before we get to 345 so i guess that means there's 35 minutes left in the day and this wick from this candle right here is actually going to be pretty significant so if you want to make your stop below that line i can understand that if you want to get out now, I can understand that. Because if you do own shares, you likely, ah, man, how much are you giving up by doing that? If you bought shares on this breakout or on this uh, breakout um, or on this retest gap, there's a strategy where you would have bought at the open of here. At any rate, these are all profitable stops. You got to figure out what works best for your plan and do that. Our trigger here has not yet triggered, um, which is a good thing, right? If you're going to come down here and hit the stop, you don't want your trigger to have, to have triggered. Yeah, I think the stop was for that trigger. So if you're still thinking about that trade, you're going to have to move your stop down to, I think, there uh, for now. So I'll put that there. Um, when would I do a bear call spread? I'm not sure. I need a, a large bearish candle, I think. These are all just kind of weak stuff. I think this is the divergence causing this thing to go sideways for a little bit. So um, I don't see anything ominous yet for Amazon. If the... 100 simple moving average comes in and crosses over the 200, then I think we'll get some energy, uh, some bullish energy we may pop. If the market continues bearish, that may drag this down or may uh, let it go sideways. Remember that this is a huge gap here. This is a very fast run up. So this stock is very, very tired and needs to rest. So that's my thoughts on Amazon. We'll go over here and check out Google. Actually, I want to check out Facebook. We haven't looked at Facebook in forever. And like totally forever. Johnny Howlett is in his first covered call. Uh, I think that will expire worthless. And if it doesn't, 
you'll likely be selling your stock for a profit. So, woohoo! Either way, March week two. What's today? Today's March March week week one. Okay. This one kind of looks like uh, Amazon did, and let's see what the EMAs look like. Okay. Yeah, this thing has a lot of sideways, a lot of sideways action going on. Um, and I am going to kind of do my lane trick that I did on that other stock. And I am going to draw a line. I think I'm going to draw it there. I pulled up the trend tool. If I do a horizontal line like that, and I'm going to color that orange. And I'm going to draw another line there. And this one, I'm going to make lime green. So that's kind of how I would draw the, uh, the channels on this one. And so you could have purchased here and sold there. Um, I don't see a sell signal here, but this would be another buy signal probably there and sell there. I don't see a sell signal, but there is a buy signal. I, uh, I'm sorry, that last one was too long. You would have probably bought there and sold there. Here you do get a sell signal and likely would have sold here and bought there. No signals in through here. You might have gotten a buy signal off of that one and sold in there. <coughs> Excuse me. But that's kind of how my um, my channel strategy would work. Let's see. Since this thing's going so sideways, let's take a look at the stochastics. Ooh. Very interesting that the stochastics have already left the overbought region even though the stock is still going up that's a very bearish sentiment i see divergence a little bit there but really some there so i think um this will give you a sell signal if you like this channel strategy i think you'll get a sell signal uh, with a close below there i bet you get that on monday maybe tuesday and uh, if you do sell it there and buy it as soon as it gets to this green line that would be my plan for facebook interesting facebook going sideways who would have thunk it cool also um if you like credit spreads Wow, you got premium on an 84 covered call. So if you get a close in my purple circle here, then you could definitely look at a bull put spread, I'd say above 82.50 or 83, somewhere uh, in this area. And then if you if we get a bounce out of the green area, you can look at a bear call, uh, this would be a bear call spread. Up here above 82.50, above 83. And then when we come down here and bounce off of uh, 72, 71, oh man, I'd really like it below 70 if you could. But do a bull put spread. Some down here below 70, maybe 71 if you get a big strong close um, above the green line. That is my plan for Facebook. Ah. Oh. I may do this. Uh, uh, I'm more of a day trader now. Um, wow. If we get a bearish close below 79.07, I really do think it's going to come down here to the green line area. I would feel very sure. I would, I would risk an R on that. Absolutely, I would. Because your stop could go. Sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm falling in love with this trade. If you could get an entry there, set your stop there, that would be an awful stop. That's only a 1.3.
if you could set your stop there so we'd we'd want another candle on Monday that maybe starts there or does something like that but you would have all of these EMAs uh, in your favor also your entry might be a little bit tighter at any rate, I think a two to one reward risk ratio is very likely. Make sure you have it before you enter the trade. But um, uh, I'm, I'm liking that bearish trade. And if you buy puts, you also might be able to get a two to one reward risk ratio a little bit easier with shares. But the catch is if it if it does something like this and goes sideways in the middle here, um, something like this, if it goes sideways for a while before hitting the target, uh, your puts are going to decay in value, whereas your shares will not all right Facebook uh, if it comes down here I will be more bearish than bullish if we continue upward which I'm finding hard to think but if it does continue upwards um, I would wait for a retest of this consolidation uh, pattern and buy there and Johnny I think your covered call is looking great that was an awesome trade that you did um, if it does pop up and comes down and that retest holds then you might be able to buy this covered call back for a profit or break even or you can just hold on to it and sell your shares at a profit because that's what it's all about right buying low and selling high and by selling a covered call you just get paid for buying low and selling high so sweet plan nice trade I like it I love it I want more of it um, my dad is saying LinkedIn is doing some interesting thing. You'll have likes an 84, 85 bear call spread for March. Uh, Yo, do you want me to take a look and see if there's premium there or, or, or is there premium? I guess we can switch over here to uh, Yahoo Finance. One of these can be Yahoo Finance. Yoav says there is premium in an 84, 84 fair call spread. Nice. Okay, Facebook options. I want March 20th expiration. That's the monthlies. That's the one you were talking about, right, Yoav? March 20th. And an 84, these are puts, I believe. No, these are calls. So I want an 84, 85 bear call spread. So you would sell. You would sell this uh, the 84 for 31 cents. Oh, yo off. I like it. Yeah, you could uh, sell the 84 call for 31 cents. You would buy the 85 call for 20 cents. So you would have 11 cents in your pocket. That is uh, greater than 11 cent rate of return in about two weeks. That's not bad. If I were doing this trade, I would wait for a close there. I would wait for a close below that line. A lot of this premium is going to get sucked away. Yeah, here, here's, I think, what I would do. Um, wow. All right, so I'm thinking uh, lots, of, lots of things are going through my head right now, and it's just scary. It's scary how much is going through my head. Um, a couple of things. Okay, the 84-85 bear call spread is paying money today. The 84-85 bear call spread is up here. So if this stock does come up, it's going to run into a resistance point right up here. And I believe it will retest before it rolls back up. Then it's got to break through that resistance and keep going up. And let's see. I'm already past March 20th on this picture. March 20th is right here. So this thing would definitely have to do some acrobatics to get up to 84 by March 20th. Uh, I find it hard to believe that it would do that, but of course this is Facebook. 
Uh, Facebook is a very emotionally traded stock and it doesn't always follow logic like this crazy gap right back here. It could do it. Um, Angie, do we know when earnings are on Facebook? I think they were at the end of July, one, two, three, yeah. end of October, one, two, three. So they may have happened at the end of January. So we may be looking at uh, late in April. Uh, April 27th. By the way, Yoav. Spot on. Yoav, awesome suggestion. Awesome find here. So plan A, Angie's going to uh, Angie's going to find the earnings for us. Um, and while she's doing that, I'm going to say plan A would be to execute this trade now. Remember, today is Friday, so you would get two days of theta decay in your favor over the weekend. Plan B, plan A is nice. Plan A is nice. I would not have any qualms about that whatsoever. Let me get some of this off off chart, and I'll talk about plan B. Brad? Yes, ma'am. Okay. This time you're hearing me. April 22nd. Ooh, okay, so uh, these would expire just after. You know what? I'm going to type on the chart because I'm feeling crazy like that. Plan A. Bear call, let's see, 84, 85, 84, 85. Bear call spread expiring March 20th. Earnings on March 22nd for 11 cent premium. Plan B, wait for a close below 79, then do an 83, 84. Bear call spread expiring March 20th. Where can I put that? I'll put that I'll put that up here. I'll take this and move all that kind of like that. Move this over there and move this up like that maybe. Okay. Um, so plan B is wait for this thing to actually roll back down and then do your bear call spread. You'd have to do it a little bit closer but you would also have more um, uh, more indication that it is rolling down maybe 8250 8350 call spread what do you guys think about that I really like that plan. I like it. Thank you, Yoav. By the way, Yoav is a beast day trader. He is amazing. All right. Any uh, other suggestions, questions, thoughts, opposing views on Facebook? Um, all right. My dad's saying LinkedIn might be doing something a little bit interesting. Oh, man. We're almost done. Uh, ew. Oh. Oh. Um, here's why I'm making those weird noises. First of all, I'm weird. Um, second of all, this is a retest gap. It's not retesting, um, which means this gap may be holding. Holy smokes. LinkedIn is... Two hundred and sixty dollars. All right, I'm, I'm trying to figure out why a business that gives their product away for free is a two hundred and sixty dollar stock. All right, must be a lot of advertising, or maybe a lot of people are paying for LinkedIn Premium. All right, so we have a pivot point there, and one up here. I'm thinking bracket trade. Dad, thanks for suggesting this stock. This thing definitely looks juicy. Um, let's see. You typed in a little bit more. Yeah, yeah. My dad's got the same idea I do. It's been trading between 
My dad says it's trading between 264 and 274. Um, it looks like the way I've drawn it is closer to 260 and 276, but uh, we're thinking the same things. And if it breaks out of this pattern, it could it's going to go one way or another. That was very eloquent. If it if it goes if it goes down, it's going to go down. If it goes up, it's going to go up. That's a little bit more logical of what I was saying. <laughs> um, okay, we have a bullish candle here, and it gaps up. That is a retest gap. Therefore, I believe if we get a close below here, this thing will come down and retest the gap. Um, I believe we are resting here and building up energy. If we get a close above here, uh, We'll have a little retest, and then we'll take off. Hey, Angie, when are earnings on LinkedIn? Because if they are coming up before open on Monday, we could have us a perfect gap and go. And a gap out of this thing on a perfect gap and go would just be phenomenally juicy. Oh, they're April 30th. Brad. Yeah, okay. Not tomorrow. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Angie. By the way, I uh, want to give a big hand to Angie for helping this week, helping me this week while Jeremy's out. Um, Angie, you are always there. Always there. Whenever someone has needed you, you are there. And that's what being an awesome friend is all about, is just, just being there, being ready. I, I can't think of a time where you've ever not been there love you angie thank you for Big being old smile thank Big you old for being you thank you trigger at the end of the day if it breaks out of that actually i'm going to scoot that up just a skidgen because i'd hate to get a wick that says by the way the resistance isn't there it's actually up another two pennies all right dad great find thank you We've been listening to Elvis music because my dad's a stud and my dad saw Elvis twice. Before 1974, not not after. <laughs> oh, I just laughed at my own joke. By the way, I'm drinking water and I wrote something down earlier. Just a hint for those of you that know exactly what I'm talking about. Me too. All right. Way to go, Angie. But we know you're disciplined. Well, um, I, haven't made, I haven't made it to my eight pints the last couple days in a row, so I need some accountability help, please. Eight pints. Goodness gracious. Well, a hey, you know, space all that out. Today. I mean, if you drink that much water all at one time, it can be really dangerous for you, right? Oh, way spaced out all day. Yep, in between lots of okay. good food. So, yeah. Cool. Congratulations, Angie. All right, um, do, do LinkedIn. Okay, so I would be fairly directional. If you are a good type of person, um, yeah, if this thing breaks down, you can do a bear call spread. If it goes north, you could do a bull put spread. I wonder what the SMAs are doing. Uh, guys, start typing in your tickers for... Um, Anything you want me to take a look at that, that we'll be gapping after market today or before open on Monday. And I really hope I got my mute button. Angie, did I just make uh, an obnoxious noise into the microphone or did I get my mute button working? Maybe I forgot to hit the mute button and Angie's incredibly grossed out by what I just did. <laughs> at any rate. All right. Um... I talked about spread it, cred, spread it, the spread it creds. Um, let's see. Oh, if you are currently in shares, um, you can. Let's see. If you are in shares, honestly, I would put a stop where this trigger is, and if it closes below that, I'd reverse your position. I would. I'd go short. I just think if it gets below this channel, it's really going to go. Uh, let's take a. Take a look at the B bands. Oh, that is a squeeze. 
That is a squeeze. The squeeze is on. The squeeze is on. Do -do -do. All right. Sorry, I have to do that for the um, in honor of uh, Mr. Newsom. Jeremy, uh, Yoav says Jeremy had a bull put spread March expiration, two fifty five, two fifty seven point five. So two fifty five. 257.5 okay so the 257 was the short one um march expiration hmm that he entered on february 25th i uh, yeah i think this thing's going to go sideways but with these bollinger bands coming in um you may need to get ready to play defense on your spread Actually, if you could close that spread out for a profit today, I would. And here's why I'm saying that. This candle is going to close below the 20. This one wicked below the 20, but that's a close below the 20. The Bollinger Bands are coming in saying we're in the squeeze. Um, this thing's going to break, and it's going to break soon. Let's see if the indicators have any news for us. Um, Okay, so we've talked about that this little downward motion on RSI might be considered divergence, but since the stock is going sideways, I would not call it divergence. I'd call it resting. Here is bullish divergence. And it did go bullish. What do you know? That is even better bullish divergence. At any rate, okay, I'm getting distracted. By the way, I think bullish and bearish divergence in the indicators is almost as freaky as how some of these pivot points can survive for the penny for years and years and years. Um, at any rate, okay, I do not see anything here that would lead me to be more bearish than bullish. The fact that Stokes are down here might mean, the, okay, so yeah, I'm finding a bunch of uh, contradicting signals, so I'm just going to keep my trap shut and not try and make this thing more confusing than it has to be. Um, oh, gosh. Um, sorry, I, I said that because the 100 simple is so far away that if this thing does go bearish, that this would be an easy target right there. All right, so if you are in this credit spread and it expires on March 20th and you get a close below this uh, this pivot area, if you get a, a strong close below 260 on high volume, I'm thinking unravel because that would be below the, the 50. I would buy back the put that you sold, and I would wait for this thing to come down to the 50, and maybe when it gets to the 50, um, you sell the put that you own. Um, that one's going to be only slightly in the money because you've sold the 255. Um, March 20th is two weeks from today. So you're kind of, um, I, I, would, I would dump this spread if you can for a profit or for break even, um, especially if it gets below this pivot area that we've drawn here around 260. Um, if it does break down, I think I'd just buy it back because if you unravel it, time is not on your side. Or if, if I did unravel this, I would only give it a day or two. Because if it, to unravel, because you, you only have about 10 days on it, it would have to move very, very fast. And it would have to move quickly past 255. And I'm not sure it's going to do that. I think it may just kind of wheedle on down. At any rate, those are my thoughts on LinkedIn. Um, personally, I like the idea of more of a directional trade if it breaks out of that channel.
Did anybody else lose Brad or was it just me? Yeah, I lost it. All lost it also, uh, Angie. The the whole All right. screen. Not just me then. He went to a black screen. Seven minutes. Huh? There you go. Angie, my computer just turned off. Wow. I've never seen that happen before. But I have two computers going. So um, let me see if Hi. I can turn off the noise in the background. <laughs> hey, Isabella, I got eight minutes left, honey. Can you uh, keep the noise down? Almost done. Okay, uh, you guys got anything that's gapping for tomorrow? Angie, am I sharing my screen yet? Not quite. I can see the spinning ball. Not quite. It's coming. Nope. All right. I away. think I got to hit that one. It's trying. It's trying. Oh, and now my other computer's back. <laughs> and, oops, an unexpected technical problem. Yeah, no kidding. I think in my whole entire life of using computers on Windows or Macs, I've never seen this happen. Um, so tell you what, let me switch back over to my desktop because it's got more memory and I think it will operate better because my laptop is having issues. Well, hi, Ed. Marcia thinks you're a rancher. <laughs> Hello, Angie. <laughs> hey. Well, no, uh, not, not really, not anymore. We're going to kill about four minutes here. <laughs> Everybody loves Brad. Brad's typing. Okay. Technical issues. Did Isabel break it? <laughs> Yeah, I'll tell you. Gotta give a, a huge huge hand to Mr. Reed, who's here educating and entertaining us while his daughter has been in the background the entire time. So talk about juggling and keeping your concentration and your focus. Kudos to you, Brad. Yes indeed. That's that's a an accomplishment to manage it the five-year-old and conduct a program at the same time. It is. Yeah, and I've actually heard, I think I've heard, maybe it's just my imagination, but I've actually heard him snap his fingers a couple of times, I think, when she gets a little bit rowdy. All right, for, <laughs> some, for some reason, I'm looking at Brad's screen, and he's not getting the, the, the uh, ability... What if, yeah, what if we turn his voice on? Huh. Brad, turn voice on. Yes. Is that going to work, Brad? I think it's about two or three minutes before 
the program ends anyway. I know it is, but um, hmm. oh, look. his other computer is his other computer is not letting him sign on. Does Marcia so, pronounce your name? Marcia or Marcia? Marcia. Anyway. Mm -hmm. She's okay, Marcia. Marcia. Thank you for the nice comment, Marcia. Yeah, Catherine says it looks like his mic might be unplugged. Interesting. Smita, thank you. You two have a great weekend. Thank you all for bearing with us uh, with these technical issues. Um, he, he, he probably is going to have to shut everything down and restart to refresh everything. Um, Brad, I would love it if you would type something. Looks like you're trying to come back on. So, in case he's not able to come back within the next minute, watch your email boxes for the um, Friday video, third hour. Okay, definitely. So I have Brad's blessing to wrap it up. Okay, so Brad would say, be good. You all know what that means by now. Uh, trade on logic, not on hope. And uh, we'll get one in for Jeremy off on the boat, on the big boat somewhere, and say, um, love life, live life, and trade it. Have a great weekend, folks. Thank you so much for being with us. Bye. Yes, thank you all, and thank you for the nice closeout. And amazing. <laughs> Bye, Ed. Bye-bye. Zane, any company can teach you to trade, but we can also teach you how to have a lot of fun while you trade. <laughs> Bye. Okay, can I be heard? Type in a Y if you can hear me now. Yes, Brad. Yay! We All right. I can't believe 12 of you are still here. <laughs> well, it's after 4 o'clock. I guess we did start the recording early, but um, if you guys want to see something, I'd be happy to do it. Um, thanks for sticking around. Uh, I ended up having to close all my windows and reopen I actually have both headset editing right um, let's see I had talked about uh, all the financial stocks and we had I think I'd finished my talk on LinkedIn correct 
Is there anything else yeah. you guys want me to take a look at? Marsha, thank you so much for saying that. That really makes me feel good, especially after technical difficulties. I wonder if I can edit it out of the video. But um, at any rate. Well, guys, thank you so much for being here. I hope everyone has an awesome weekend. Um, and this is Brad Reed and Angie and Ed Reed signing off saying have a great weekend and trade on logic, not on hope.